Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Nicole Grimm here and welcome to another Ingest 2 Mobile video. So we're going to do yet another list of top 10 characters in Just 2 Mobile. I did do this a few times in the past and we're doing it yet again because there's a lot of things changed and the main purpose of those lists is going to be to help out uh, people decide what to prioritize in terms of their investment in characters and what they should chase with the chest openings and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, and there's been a lot of released new characters that uh, are going to uh, be in the top 10 easily. Uh, next thing that I wanted to mention before we get into this is that I'll group characters dif differently. Uh, because in the previous list I would group every single character separately and while this is not the list about the top teams, I'm going to group on the same spot teams that are inseparable. For example, we have the League of Anarchy. League of Anarchy is gonna deal absolutely no damage without entangling poison ivy, so they are all going to occupy the same slot. While uh, the uh, Dr. Fate plus Kim Flan Sakomen team, even though Kim Flan Sakomen and Dr. Fate seem quite inseparable, Kim Flan Sakomen can work to some decent extent even without Dr. Fate. While it's a very good thing, it's not the crucial part, so we will separate those. Again, if it works to some extent without that character, we'll separate them. If it literally does not work without it, we will put them together to free up some spaces and have a longer list with more characters to go through. And um, at the same time, this list will mainly focus on raid and sword performance, because to some extent, anything can do well in Arena and Champions Arena, and you don't have to build characters specifically for that. You can just use your raids and sword teams to um, fill up those spots and get your points. So that's gonna be fine. And also I'll not keep in mind that much how hard to get a specific character is, because uh, me keeping that in mind will not help you get those characters easier, and if some person gets the character that's harder to get and they get lucky, they'll have to this list to kind of guarantee that those are good characters and they should invest into them. So giving less points for how hard to get a character is in a list like this really doesn't help anybody. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like and a subscribe and a comment because it uh, definitely helps. And uh, my opinion is not infallible and I've been wrong in the past. So if you think I'm wrong about something, please let me know down in the comments so I can do better next time. And with that being said, uh, let's get into it. This is the future. Okay, so we're gonna start with a few honorable mentions, because uh, a lot of characters were very very close to making it into the list, but just slightly did not make it into the list, so we're going to go through them, one by one, and I've tried to be quicker and uh, less explanatory with those ones, because they are still not in the top 10, but very close by. Just like Flash, great support character because of um, uh, his passive, that's gonna give him one additional fast attack hit, he can uh, be put in any team that's based around dealing damage with basic attacks and will give them one more fast attack hit. He has three fast attack hits himself and with his passive that applies to himself as well, he can get four fast attack hits and deal tons of damage with his basic attacks, so definitely a great character. The Multiverse Flash, great combo builder, he's got 3 fast tech hits as well, and uh, he's going to be pretty much the go-to character if you want to buff the Multiverse team, he's got a passive that's gonna give them a ton of crit chance and crit damage, and he's got another passive that's going to reduce their power bar cost, there is no Multiverse team without a Flash in it, so great character. Zem is also going to be an honorable mention, so he's gonna be pretty much the best healer in the game, amazing for a 9 champions arena, and he's gonna be decent for aids and swords because he buffs might and arcane characters. The problem is he only buffs base attack, which means that he would give himself like 2k additional attack, and in liquids that's going to be amazing, and he's gonna be a great character there, but in swords with all the passive attack you get from the artifacts, he's really not gonna be up to par with some other characters, but definitely a great character. Brother Batman. So Brother Batman is gonna be uh, pretty much a jack of all trades, almost master of everything, but falling a little bit short. Armor Pearson Special Wonder is amazing for A9 Champions Arena, also disables specials, so can be used to set up for Solar Banshee. Also the uh, stun bomb is going to be great, you can, uh, if you don't have Arkham Knight Batman, use him to set up the stun for Harbor Carlequin team, and in Arena and CA he can be a great damage dealer himself, but in Raids and Swords he doesn't really pull the damage as a damage dealer, nor is he the best choice for Solar Banshee and uh, Harbor Carlequin, but he can be a decent replacement, so overall a very versatile character. 
Multiverse Armor is super cool. She's an okay damage dealer. She kind of falls short when compared to other characters in the game that simply deal far more damage. And uh, she's kind of off the meta right now, except for maybe League Raids. But even then, there's some replacements for her. So she simply doesn't pull the damage, but at the same time pulls more damage than all the characters that are not really and never were meta damage. Though. She's still above average in... Uh, terms of a damage dealer and a great character all around, but not quite good enough to make it to the list, sadly. Reverse Flash, so he's got this passive that's gonna allow him to generate some power if used correctly, and he's got 3 fast tech hits, he's pretty straightforward, great combo builder, though he can be, be replaced and he's not that much of a mandatory character in the Silver Bench team, did not make it to the list, but still, great character. Just like Cyborg, so yeah, yet again, the Just League team doesn't really pull the numbers anymore, sadly, same as with the Multiverse team, uh, so his passive is mainly used to give uh, the Just League hackers uh, more damage on their basic attack hits, and it's gonna be amazing for that, but as I said, currently no Just League team pulls the damage anymore to make in the top 6 teams, but definitely a solid choice and a good support for a budget damage dealer Just like Flash team. Just like Superman, the only character on this list that I do not have and that's for good reason because I'm not really eager to get him so this dude is gonna be amazing for you in Arena and Champions Arena and he's gonna be a good damage dealer because of his passive that gives him more attack for each Batman character and of course he's a Just League character so he also can get buffed uh, from Just League Cyborg. He doesn't really make it in the list because yet again he doesn't really pull that much damage compared to the other teams that are on this list and that's why I'm not really trying to get him myself because he's hard to get, hard to gear up and that the end of that you get almost uh, a meta damage dealer so yeah not making it to the list okay now really getting into the list we have the number 10 character which is going to be arkham knight batman so arkham knight batman is going to have uh, quite a few passives at his disposal he's gonna have uh, this thing which is going to tremendously buff the defensive capabilities of himself and all other tech and agility characters in your team that making him amazing for arena and champions arena and also giving more survivability for heartbreaker harley quinn because his main role in raids the soul raids will be to set up uh, stuns for heartbreaker harley quinn and um, uh, the rest of her team which includes epi and himself obviously and it's gonna allow her to uh, also fight bosses that are stun resistant while well, you should still avoid them because it's not an optimal fight it gives you the option and it's pretty much the only way to make the uh, League of Anarchy viable in uh, League Raids. Now for his other passives, this one is going to be particularly useful in Arena and Champions Arena because you get a ton of health and uh, some power bars when depicting an opponent. And other than that, a great character all around definitely deserves the top, the top 10 spot but doesn't go really further than that because Nowadays you can replace him with Raven and if you don't have him you're not in a huge rush to get him because you can use Pratt or Batman as a replacement and just use the Heartbreak Harley Quinn team in Soul Raids against bosses that are not stun resistant. And that is kind of what you're going to do anyway even after you get him. But yeah, let's move on. Number 9 is going to be Silver Banshee. So Silver Banshee has a quite uh, interesting kit to explain. So first up you use this to apply the passive on the enemy. And use special ones to disable some of their abilities, and this thing will deal increased damage for each ability that's going to be disabled. In the, if there's one thing about Silver Banshee that's resilience, no matter how the meta shifted and what teams were viable, she was in the top 6 teams in all stories that have been released currently and also in League Raids. So it's a very stable character, and the fun fact about her is that she's gonna have maxed out defense without you actually applying any defense to her. So yeah, overall amazing character uh, that uh, is going to be very reliable in a lot of situations, far more versatile than you think, definitely deserves number 9. Coming in at number 8, we're going to have Dr. Fate and Power Girl, so they both pretty much do the same thing, which is reducing two power bars for their entire team. The rest of their abilities are irrelevant because uh, they are mainly used as support characters. Uh, and uh, the Dr. Fate passive is going to be slightly better than the Power Girl passive, because that one is gonna reduce the defense by 10%, and he's also better than her because he can do an infinite combo with the Fire Box. But other than that, they are very, very similar, and even though Dr. Fate is going to be slightly better than her, I still think they are worth putting together, because they pretty much serve the same role. And they are going to be such amazing characters, because no matter what happens, they are always going to be uh, in the meta, no matter what teams we see, no matter how uh, how the damage dealers change, we might get to a day where Kinfla and Sakuman is no longer going to be one of the best damage dealers in the game, is no longer going to be in the top 6 teams, that's very unlikely, but let's, even if that happens, they are still going to be found in one of the teams, because there's never enough power reduction for your team, so definitely deserve a spot on this list.
Coming in at number 7, we have Brainiac, so by himself he's kinda garbage, by himself without a legendary character he's kind of garbage, but when you give him a legendary bro, he's gonna buff the crap out of them because of this thing, so this gives them a ton of attack and at the same time you're going to get lethal attack chance and lethal attack damage from Brainiacs. And he can get a ton of little attack damage to a special one, so basically what you do with this dude is you put him in the team with uh, uh, Black Manta or Raven preferably, though this will work for every single legendary character and will tremendously enhance their damage dealing abilities. So overall an amazing buffer for legendary characters, pretty much steroids for legendary characters and he's gonna buff to the highest extent characters uh, other than Raven. Raven does a little bit of a better job than him at buffing stuff, but uh, far better than him. But other than that he's gonna be one of the best characters in the game definitely because of how much damage a Raven with him or a Black Manta with him can do. So yeah, pretty much an amazing character. A lot of you might kind of hate this character because he'll be most likely the first legendary you'll get because he's got the challenge. Uh, but as soon as you get the legendary character, you'll see how useful and how powerful Brainy actually is. And yeah, great character overall. He's got some other abilities uh, like uh, taking control of enemies in the arena and uh, not allowing you to take uh, damage above a certain threshold with his passes. But yeah. Overall, he's all about buffing and he does a pretty damn good job at that. Coming in at number 6, we're going to have Batman Ninja Catwoman plus the rest of the Batman Ninja team. This is kind of the first instance where I'm just gonna drop the whole team in there, because it would have been quite hard to rank each one of them and they would have occupied a ton of spots, because they would most likely have made it, all of them, in the top 10. So, uh, Batman Catwoman is gonna do a lot of things, uh, amongst which granting immortality to your Batman characters, granting them blind uh, uh, from their abilities, having a thing that's gonna deal dot damage to the opponent and heal herself, some little attack chance, but she would be nothing without the rest of the boys. So, we got uh, Batman Robin in here. Which is gonna be a pretty decent character by himself, though sadly he doesn't pull the damage, even though this looks amazing on paper. Simply doesn't pull as much damage as Batman Jack Catwoman. But he's gonna be able to give them a few things. So Combo Kid is gonna give them a slightly higher combo, which is great, but not that much. But Ninja Lethality is going to actually be the reason why the Batman Ninja team is so good and it deals damage. Because this is the thing that allows the Batman Ninja team to stack lethal attack damage and deal a ton more damage than if they did not have access to this. If you get this out of the Batman Ninja team, uh, Batman Ninja Catwoman will deal uh, slightly more damage than your av average Atlantean Armor Aquaman fully built. So yeah, definitely a must-have character in the Batman Ninja team and definitely a great character himself. And we'll also have uh, Chunky Boy Grodd over here. So Grodd is just amazing by himself. Uh, he's gonna have a shield, so that's great, but his passives is gonna reduce the defense of the enemy. He's gonna reduce the damage of the enemy to the point where they deal absolutely no damage to you. Applies to every single Batman Ninja character, so each one of them gets this. Every fifth attack will deal additional damage. He's gonna heal when he's low on health and he will allow the Batman Jet to power generate when they hit lethals. And that's gonna be some crazy amounts of power generation. That's, that's gonna be kind of the best power generation tool in the entire game. Sadly only applies to Batman Ninja characters, but it's going to go pretty damn well when it gets to that. So yeah, that's all the Batman Ninja characters on this spot. Like, look, if you do have the Beta Club, you're going to rank them uh, slightly higher than I did on this list, but a lot of people don't have access to that, so that's why I did not rank them uh, higher myself. So if you do have the Beta Club, they uh, go all the way to the fourth or maybe uh, the third spot and uh, just drop all the other things uh, one tier below. But as long as you don't have uh, the Beta Club, this is a pretty safe spot for them. And even so, they are such an amazing team. Coming in at number 5, it saddens me to say, but we have Deathstroke. As I said, this is the most disappointing release in terms of the character design and the character mechanics that we've ever gotten in Just 2 Mobile. Because his combos feel like garbage and he's unable to tag in or jump over hits and he hasn't been fixed yet and that's not something that you should overlook and get used to. But nevertheless, uh, when it comes to damage he's really gonna deal a very high amount of damage. And he's got a lot of passives, he's got a lot of abilities, but look, nothing here matters except for the special 2. 
the special two is going to deal uh, a, per a certain percentage of the enemy's health, and uh, this is actually better than the Kionflan Sakomen thing because the Kionflan Sakomen thing is going to be triggered only three times a battle. Because this thing is going to be split in so many more instances of damage, obviously if you have it at low level and you didn't upgrade it all the way to a higher level. And I think that was something that will get patched in the future. Uh, he will be able to bypass the damage caps uh, this way and be able to split his damage into more instances dealing more damage. Like look, I still don't have the gears on this dude, just to explain if you got confused by this. I still don't have the gears on this dude, and without gears, and with the random artifact on, I dealt 500 million damage against uh, boss dark side. So definitely a great character, kind of sucks when the enemy is going to be low on health, but in Soul Race, for the most part, he will mostly find fights where he deals tons of damage, so Deathstroke is definitely gonna be one of the greatest characters in the game. Sadly, because his AI sucks ass, he's, he, he's frustrating to play as, but he's very good, really hope they fix him, really, really hope they fix him. Coming in number 4, we're going to have Kim Flan Sakomen, so this dude, you all know him, you all love him, he's in the League Store, you can all get him. Special tree here, that's gonna deal a percentage of the enemy's health, and it's gonna be used 3 times per battle. Again, this kind of gets reduced usually by the damage cap, so you will not get the full value, but nevertheless, it's gonna be something, it's gonna be kind of the most versatile damage there in the game, because it can literally be used against any fight in the game, he will always do well, no matter what debuffs the opponent has, no matter what the opponent is gonna try to do to you, same applies to an, to an extent to Deathstroke, though to a lesser extent, this dude is gonna do amazing job. And what makes him slightly better than Deathstroke? I mean, Deathstroke is gonna deal slightly more damage with his special too. Sometimes the Inconfluence Sakomen will deal in total because, as I said, his percentage damage is going to be split for Deathstroke in uh, far more instances of damage. So that's gonna really help him when uh, the enemy is gonna cap your damage at a certain amount. But other than that, what makes him better than Deathstroke is, other than the fact that he's easier to get, though I did not take this too much into account for this one, though I did think about it slightly when ranking them, and the fact that he has a functioning uh, com combat AI and you can actually use this dude properly, that's, that's also a bonus in my book. But yeah, other than that, he's going to also have a passive that's going to constantly build him more and more attack and this will allow him to get some crazy damage off when paired up with Raven outside of his special 3 percentage damage and even by himself, making him deal a ton of damage even without relying too heavily on this unlike Deathstroke. So this dude is going to be an amazing character, also revives by the way, if you die. Yeah, great character, get him as soon as possible from the League Store. Coming in at number 3 we got the League of Anarchy. Like, look, it's the whole League of Anarchy because uh, we got Harbor Harley Quinn and we got Joker. You're going to decide which one of them you're going to use, depending on the specific scenario that you're going to be facing. Most times, Harbor Harley Quinn will pull more, more damage, but there's definitely scenarios where Joker will actually pull more damage than her. So they really come kind of together. I would say that Harbor Harley Quinn is going to be better than Joker, but they fill quite a very, very similar role. And they are both League of Anarchy, so I thought I'd put them together to not uh, make them occupy too many places. And they're also going to be in there with EPI. So basically, without EPI, they deal no damage because she actually makes them deal dot damage on their basic attacks. And that's going to be their main source of damage. And she's also going to be able to heal them, like the entire team. She's got to stun herself, by the way. Joker is going to, on the, on the other hand, to be able to uh, uh, mainly deal more damage, uh, depending on how many targets have already died, including yours and the enemies. So where there's fights, where there are summons, and you can kill more than uh, one opponent before actually dealing damage to uh, the enemy boss, uh, he's gonna be great and better than Harbor Harley Quinn. Well, on the other hand, Harbor Harley Quinn is going to be the go-to in most scenarios, because she's also got 3 fast tech hits, so that's also gonna increase her damage quite heavily. And uh, she's going to have a very strong ability that's going to increase, uh, not this one, this one, increase by, not this one, this one, increase by 300% the damage against stun targets, and this is just amazing for damage dealing. We had League of Anarchy, definitely one of the best teams in the game, and I really felt like they really deserve to be on the same spot without pointlessly me trying to make the difference between them and rank them differently and occupy tons of spots, because we're really tight in here, okay? So yeah, with that being said, let's move on. Coming in number two, we're going to have Black Manta. Like, look, this guy, this guy was made to do everything. It's gonna have burning, 
It's gonna have power slow. It's gonna have stun. A stun that works the same way as Arcanite Batman stun in terms of the fact that he has a 50% chance to stun targets that are immune to stun. He's gonna have a passive that's not gonna allow the opponent to heal and inflict constant dot damage. He's gonna have a passive that's gonna constantly stack his damage on basic attacks, making you deal more and more damage all the way up to 100 stacks. And he's gonna have a passive that's gonna give him some additional health and damage reduction from blocking. This dude can tank, this dude can deal damage, this dude can hit raids, this dude can destroy arena teams, this dude can do well in Champions Arena. Overall, the most versatile character in the entire game by far, and one of the best damage dealers easily, so he's definitely number 2 in my book. He previously was number 1, but we all know at this point what's coming at number 1, okay? Coming in at number 1, we have Raven, so look, Raven is gonna have this thing which is gonna apply some darkness stacks on the opponent and then for each darkness stack that's applied on the opponent you're going to get tons more damage for yourself and any teammates that are hitting the opponent while the darkness is active. So this is gonna have some crazy synergies with League of Arky, with Kinflan Sakomen, he, she, with a legendary characters, with Beta Club. This She's gonna pretty much buff any character in the game to make them deal depending on the character from 3 times the damage they would usually deal to like 10 times the damage they would usually deal. So yeah, overall the best support character in the game and because of the fact that she's also a legendary character so she can be buffed by Brainiac and when using super move she will get some additional attack for herself, she's gonna be also the best damage dealer in the game. So, a little bit of a weird character over here, best support and best damage dealer all in one and at the same time she's gonna have uh, a little bit of uh, power steal on this, guaranteed crit on this, uh, is going to heal from the stacks, so that can be counterproductive in some specific fights because you don't want to lose the stacks, and she's gonna also have an ability shield that's going to stay for 20 seconds on this one. Raven is by far the best legendary character in the game. If you are saving gems for anything, you should save for a Le Raven legendary chest. If you are willing to spend any money on the game, you should buy a 3 star or 4 star Raven. She is by far the absolute best in character in just 2 mobile so far. And yeah, that was it for, for this list. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below to let me know if you agree with my opinion. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. This is the future.